is a book review of Marvel Horror. This book came out in 2019, around Halloween time. Strange enough, there's also a new volume coming out fairly soon. Of course, coming up to Halloween. So hopefully there'll be a volume three at some point as well. This is a massive tome. This really, really is a read you probably could uh, take to your tomb. As it says, back from the tomb, obviously, because most of these were from the 1970s. Uh, there's a bit crossover into the 1950s and a little bit of 1980s as well. So what does it, oh, ow. <laughs> put it on my leg and it crushes it. Marvel puts the super into supernatural and there's the various, just gonna turn it there so you can see it. Zombie, living mummy, brother voodoo, it. Now the golem, Gabriel, the scarecrow and Modric. And for some weird reason, I'm not certain why they did the order in, in that because the order doesn't match the actual book. It's actually zombies first, our brother voodoo is next. So it's weird as if they changed their mind somewhere along the line. However, this book, 2019, and it's about, I'm have to look again, it's about 1,320 odd pages. So I'm just gonna run through it. I loved lots of the stories in this. Not all, some of the stories, but many of these stories were actually ones I've never read before. I mean, I've never read any Gabriel the Devil Hunter, but they weren't too bad. They weren't brilliant, but still, a decent read. Also, likewise, the zombie. I'd only read a few of the stories of the zombies. Zombies. The zombie. <laughs> not anything to do with The Walking Dead or anything. Actually, this zombie is nothing like The Walking Dead one. It would be very different now. However, it's got a very, it's got no introduction, which is a pity. I think it's always nice because a lot of these were all from the various black and white magazines back in the 70s. I love those magazines. Bought loads and loads of them. And this is, but I'm, well, probably one or two zombie at most. But you've got some here, Strange Tales, obviously. They, so there were there are some colour ones. But Monsters Unleashed and those sort of ones. So it's not all black and white. There's a good percentage of black and white, but there's a good percentage of colour as well. This one is really quite a good one. It's a Bill Everett. I love this one, Zombie. Now that's a 1950s one, so it shows you it does go a little bit into the past. Obviously they show the zombie. Doesn't look exactly the same as the zombie laser, but there's actually a little bit of green in the next one. So you've got a bit of green there. Now the binding, which and everything, oh, pretty good. I'll just quickly show you the book. I'll flip the pages open so you can see how it holds. So people love that sort of thing. So it, it does weigh a ton, this book. But you've got a lot of black and white at the start. You've got the zombie story, so you've got the zombie there. And I think the artwork is superb. I love the artwork. The restoration is absolutely super sharp. It really is first rate. I mean, you'd be very hard pushed to find, especially a lot of these old, um, now of course you've got them slabbed and it's probably a 9.8 or 9.6 and that sort of stuff. I'm certain that the pages are pretty white. However, I don't think they're gonna be as sharp as this. I might be wrong as I don't particularly find many, most of my copies of all these old ones, black and white ones are quite, uh, seen better days, so they're not so great, but the artwork is superb all the way through. And I love the story, the story's great. It's, of course, of its time, and uh, it's, uh, it doesn't say much, but he doesn't say much at all. You've also got the colour, you've got the zombie version, uh, the zombie one, but in colour this time, the Bill Everett story, which is odd. So you've got the sort of weird white and green, uh, but you've got some extra, brilliant extras. I love the extras in this. They've actually, instead of putting it all the back, they've actually separated the different, obviously, heroes or characters, I should say. Sometimes you couldn't really say they're heroes or not. I think it's all, obviously, Brother Voodoo is obviously more the traditional sort of hero, and he actually, ends up with a number of other brilliant artwork as well. Gene Cohen, of course, I love. The stories were actually quite good. I quite enjoyed them. And there's also obviously crossovers with the actual Marvel, standard Marvel universe. Most of the time it's not, but you've got like Spider-Man turns up and others. So there's some black and white there. I think uh, there's some more, I think, where is it? I'm just looking. Oh, got some fire eyes. You got some weird villains in this. This is quite often the same with the zombie one, of course, as well. But, oh, Doctor Strange, there's Doctor Strange does turn up. And I think there's Moon Knight. 
Anyway, we've got some extras also. Introducing Brother Voodoo, obviously in black and white. And of course, you've got the Essential Marvel Horror Volume 2 and Volume 1. Now, that Volume 2 was the one that included this, but of course, they were all completely in black and white. I loved the Essential books. Sadly, I didn't love them enough because I got rid of them. Volume 1 and Volume 2, I regret getting rid of those. But I was over the moon once this was released, and obviously the subsequent volumes hopefully will cover all that material again. So uh, I regret getting rid of those. Do that sometimes in a bit of decluttering madness. Anyway, got Living Mummy. Now, I enjoyed those stories at the time. I did actually buy a lot of the supernatural thrillers. That were quite a good one, especially uh, some of the earlier issues. So supernatural thrillers, great artwork again. Very good story. Lots of dramatic stuff. And there's some the art there. Oh, that is hefty. Now, the stories, quite often with a lot of these characters, quite often they just petered out. Or you had like the, a sort of conclusion to them. I mean, they didn't really have long runs. I mean, the Living Mummy was not a character that really, but it's surprising. I really thought that, you know, you could have had quite a, a long story. You could have had lots of stories with him set back in Egypt kind of thing, sort of a bit of his background. Obviously not as a Living Mummy, maybe. But, but you could have, maybe time travel stories. You could have had him go back in time to meet him. Uh, that sort of stuff. But what can you do? You can't go back and uh, change. Obviously, that was the stories, storylines. And they were good. And they were of the time. And got the thing there. And then to the next set of stories. No, I'm not going to show that. You haven't got many extras when it comes to Living Mummy. That was it. Because, of course, he didn't have a long run. So there's not that many extras. Ooh. So it's absolutely one of the heftiest. 1,300 odd pages on really good quality paper. It is hefty. And it was really tricky to read. I have to say, it was like, I was crushed under the weight of it. Uh, I created The Colossus, which I'm very glad for him for doing that. And that was a brilliant Jack Kirby repeat, reprint from the Monster Bus. I've already got Monster Bus series, so it was nice to read it again, of course. But uh, obviously, just it is nice that these omnibus include all the works, even if they have been used before in other omnibuses. Then you've got Astonishing Tales. Now, at the time, I was so disappointed when Astonishing Tales, it changed, because it had Kazar was in Astonishing Tales, and I loved those stories in Astonishing Tales. Of course, you had the Kazar comic, but it just said to me, I then really started collecting comics around that time, suddenly... Kazar vanished out of this and it was there. And I thought, whoa. But actually, the stories weren't bad. However, I have to say, there is a, you've got Fing Fang Foom was the next one. And then you've got the Golem. Uh, I'm just going to show the Golem. There's the Golem. And that was in Strange Tales. Again, another thing that was slightly strange for me at the time, because obviously Doctor Strange in Strange Tales and all that sort of stuff. And then suddenly Golem was in it. How weird. Because Doctor Strange had his own comic book and so on and so on. So you obviously had these guys. I didn't understand that at the time. Got the thing in the story there. Now that story, I think, does resolve itself quite nicely. So, But some of these don't particularly resolve. They're just sort of, that's it. And maybe they've the characters appeared so, since. I don't know. I haven't followed all their careers. So what's this one? This is, oh, this one's a, an unusual one. I hadn't read any of these ones. This is Gabriel the Devil Hunter. So I'll just show you that. So, I'm just going to crush this book. And so that's a good story. Then oh, Fantastic Four is in this story, weirdly. And some extras of Gabriel the Devil Hunter. And then on to the Scarecrow. Now, Scarecrow didn't last very long. So he was, I think they sort of fill this book up with a few characters that were minor characters. Scarecrow is definitely one of them, which is a pity again. Why didn't they continue with the Scarecrow? Quite baffling. However, they didn't. And it finishes off in a two-in-one with the thing. I bet they could always bring them back. They brought lots of characters back, so why not bring that one back? However, not many extras there. And Mordred the Mystic. And I remember buying that at the time. Uh, the story never particularly went anywhere. You obviously, a very hundred pages or so of Mordred the Mystic. Uh, though it does have the absolutely brilliant Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver John Byrne run in the Avengers. And I loved 
that one. So that's the uh, brilliant story. The Sarathon or something. Something cool like that. Wonder Gore. Anyway. And that's that. What an absolutely, absolutely hefty book. Thoroughly, and so back from the tomb, because obviously, like I said, most of this material was 70s and obviously into the 80s. But I think just a, I love this volume. Uh, it's brilliant. Thoroughly enjoyed all the stories. 80% of them anyway. 80% of the stories. Some were a bit uh, not that brilliant. I'm looking forward to volume two. In fact, there's a lot of what characters in volume two that I'm going to look forward to more than the ones that were in this. So volume two is definitely, hopefully, very shortly. And hopefully volume three. Maybe Frankenstein comes to mind. Now, there's probably... I've been trying to think of many other characters they could bring in. It's very hard to think of many more. But I'm certain they could dig up a few more horror characters for a volume three. I would love to see a volume three. Obviously, Frankenstein comes to mind, but uh, there must be others. And, of course, there's all the 50s. Bill Everett. Bill Everett produced a lot. But, again, I would then love an omnibus of Bill Everett's work, horror work, as well as science fiction, from the 50s as well. So that's that. The Marvel horror. Absolutely. And, of course... If you're into these horror stories, uh, you might, of course, like the DC ones. They've got some omnibus editions, and I've got some, I think, behind. I don't know if they are those ones. I don't know, Batgirl, probably, those ones. But also got House of Secrets and House of Mystery, of course. And I think there's probably other ones. Of course, there's Wrath of Spectre, as well as this comes to mind, and the Phantom Stranger. So there's also DC horror ones as well to check out if you're into horror books. So, uh, so Marvel Horror. Really, really brilliant volume, and uh, so yeah, it's uh, good for weight for next size as well. This book, I think, this is one of the more hefty uh, of the omnibus editions. Totally recommended.